All right, how's it going? I am Joe Adams, and welcome to the Relentless Pursuit podcast. Uh, this is the first episode of many to come. Uh, over the course of this time period, we'll be covering a variety of topics with a variety of top-notch individuals that are on a Relentless Pursuit. Um, we'll be covering controversial topics, fun topics. You know, I'll be doing some solo work, and I'm just really stoked about all the guests we'll be bringing on. So definitely uh, stay tuned and we're going to keep the ball rolling and we will be putting this out bi-weekly for now eventually moving into a weekly podcast all right so first today I have my number one guest and one of my best friends someone I consider a brother Jesse Mays what's up my man what's up dude how are you doing I'm doing well all stoked right to be here man yeah yeah I'm yeah super stoked to be here hey man I'm glad to have you here um you know obviously this is the first episode so yeah <clears throat> you know I got somebody I feel comfortable with, like working yeah. through the bumps. That's and I'm, I'm, I'm stoked about it, man. I we love work, you, dude. We've so. worked through a lot of bumps together. <laughs> we, so. we really have. We'll be getting into that a little bit. Um, so, Jesse, uh, some, some may know us as the uh, Bare Knuckle Brothers. We were called that last weekend. Yeah. Um, we, about a month, a little over a month ago, we beat each other up pretty good, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, we beat the hell out of each other. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, we got in the woods uh, for like a midsummer event. And it was it was June, yeah, mid June, yeah. and um, June twentieth. Yeah, yeah, we decided we had we had planned on it prior, but we decided to do a bare knuckle event together, mm-hmm. and and so that's been on YouTube going around. And what'd you think about all that? It was definitely a hallmark of my life. It was freaking awesome. Yeah, um, honestly, yeah, our our fight reinvigorated so much stuff for me. It, it's not even funny, you know. Like, I mean, I have a whole backstory about me fighting and everything, but the. Uh, but yeah, it, it's 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 exhilarating, and I need that in my life. So you know, a lot of people don't get that, man. Um, yeah. Like I said, I've been asked by quite a few people, like, why? Yeah. You know, but the only answer I can give them is like, why not? Or like, yeah. You know, uh, if you're asking why, you won't understand. Yeah. Well, I mean, I usually say, you know, if you if if if, if, if you can fight your brothers, you know, your brothers can fight with you. And so uh, I think I think it's a big deal to have done that because I mean. <laughs> me and you know like firsthand like if we ever in some shit there's no question you know it's just yeah. like that dude can fight <laughs> getting down exactly, exactly man yeah yeah now people see you know friends like people that are considered brothers like punching each other in the yeah. face you know it's exactly like, oh, maybe <laughs> yeah so I mean, roll, right if we, if we did it to each other what will we do what will we do to you hey man big time and you know there's the aspect of like keeping that tradition alive man and that's what mm-hmm. all like fully circles back to is keeping exactly. traditions alive in a world where tradition is being stripped away we're mm-hmm. fully aware of that um but hell yeah man i love mm-hmm. that moment with you and we'll be doing it again i'm sure at yep. some point you yeah. know more you to come on that fuck up my face i'm sure <laughs> <laughs> hey man you'll probably get me back don't worry maybe you know it's got it's all got to play out some way but um all right jesse so i know what you do mm-hmm. i know you know i i really respect that you are a Big time professional when it comes to the human body. Mm-hmm. I mean, you have this understanding of the human body unlike anybody else I really know. Um, and the way the sure. way you articulate it and the way you you just get your knowledge out there is mm-hmm. just I've, I've, I've always find myself like reaching out to you for advice. Like I thought I was well educated, you know, on on the human body, but you you definitely shed a lot of light on some things, man. Cool, I appreciate that. Yeah, no problem, yeah. man. And uh, you know, the proofs in the pudding. Like a lot of top notch individuals come yeah. come to you. You know, uh, you know. <laughs> Olympia competing bodybuilder athletes, yeah. you know, top level athletes mm-hmm. from all over, you know, I think he worked at, on Mr. Olympia. Yeah. 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 Brandon Curry, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He yeah comes he's, he's awesome. dude. Yeah. He he's comes great. to you for word. That says something, yeah. you know, he's, he's a top dog and you know, you got the guys like, I know you worked on, you know, the rock stunt double. Yeah. Know, that was cool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That was awesome. But you, yeah, he's a great dude. Exactly, man. And you know, he spoke highly of you, but you work on a lot of like killer people, man. Mm-hmm. And so there's something to be said about that. Um, but I want to know what got you there. So okay. let's backtrack a little bit. You know, how are you now? You're 27. 26. Six. Um, let's start from your childhood. Um, okay. You know, tell me about your upbringing a little bit. Well, that's interesting. Um, so I, I, I didn't exactly get brought up in the, you know, best household. Um, in fact, it really wasn't a household. Um, I, we moved around quite a bit. Uh, I believe at three months old, my dad got hurt at work. Uh, he, he broke his back. Um, he said, he, he said he fell and later, later on found out it was because he was fighting. Haha, <laughs> guess it runs in the genes. Um, but, uh, 
he got hurt and we had to kind of rely on my uh, mom's grandparents to kind of take care of us for a little bit. So we had to move to Arkansas, which is where my mom's from. Um, at that point in time, I was in Nashville or they were in Nashville, Tennessee. So I was born in Nashville. And um, uh, basically from there, it was just all Arkansas for my whole life until the military. Um, How'd you like Arkansas? I don't think I've even been to Arkansas. Worst place in the world. No, nah, it's, it's not that bad. It's beautiful. It's got, it's got a great nature. But as far as the people, like, I don't know what happened, but the people aren't near. Yeah, no, people aren't that great. So I don't even know what you consider Arkansas, like the South. It's, or it just yeah, I mean, I, cons itself? I consider it the South just because it's, it's, it's absolutely the, the same as everything else around it. But uh, <laughs> I guess everybody considers it the Midwest and, like, Every southerner is just like Arkansas is not the South, so yeah, whatever. Well, so something you said about that, you know, true southerners yeah. know. You yeah, know? yeah. <laughs> well, I was born in Tennessee, so whatever, it works. <laughs> I mean, we got our buddy Brett down in Florida that just thinks Florida is the South, and that's yeah. that. And I'm like, you're, yeah. you're missing it, bro. Yeah. You're missing it. <laughs> yeah, he's talking about Tennessee. Like, yeah, you guys up there in Canada. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Thinking we get four foot of snow up here. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so it, um, it, you know, the upbringing was very rough my dad is a very good man my dad is a very honest very true to heart uh guy and he raised me to the best of his ability in the environment and you know i'm not gonna i'm probably not gonna say too much harshly on my mom but at the same time my um my my mom was the catalyst for most of my 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 life and my childhood she mm -hmm. um you know she for for quite a bit of time there uh, she was on drugs and she was doing um, a whole lot of a whole lot of stuff. She, she was a country singer and uh, she always kind of resented the fact that she had me um, in, in such a crucial time because she was opening at the Grand Ole Opry here in Nashville for uh, Billy Ray Cyrus. And it's a big move. Um, it's yeah, big stuff. Yeah, yeah, it's big stuff. And then she had me and then um, it's just you have a brand new baby. It's kind of hard to keep going on. You know, yeah, that rock star so, lifestyle with a, yeah. with a child. But you got to yeah. pump the brakes on something, yeah. you know. Um, so it kind of, you know, it's, it was, it, it was a pretty rough upbringing just because, uh, she went from a hundred to zero and it, you know, that rock star lifestyle was pretty hard. And I'm, I'm sure you can imagine, you know, absolutely like on the stage, you know, touring and doing stuff, you know, whatever, everything that you're, you're doing that involves a lot of drugs and a lot of parties and a lot of everything. And then all of a sudden you're a housewife. And so, I mean, I can understand it from her perspective, but at the same time, it's a huge culture shock. Yeah. yeah. Insane culture shock. Well, now and, they got those cool backpacking bags, like the Osprey ones. And like, you can still do all that shit with a kid, just like strap them on, you know, <laughs> yeah. take them for the ride, you know, you're going a hundred miles per hour. Like, just slow down for the birth kids, and then go 100 again, you know? Kids just smile, looking you around. Too. Yeah. They're like, hey, kid, I have a little cocaine. No, I'm just playing. No, but, um, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, sure. It but, no, um, but yeah, no, they're, they're, there's options like that. I, I probably wouldn't advise it. I wouldn't want to bring my kid along for a ride like that. Yeah, but, yeah. yeah. Um, long story short, um, uh, had, had a pretty decent catalyst all the way up until 14. Um, uh, mom and dad separated at that point pretty much and uh at, at at that point it was just me and my dad and that was probably the first time i really felt like i had a real personality mm -hmm. so um moving on uh, yeah mo moving on through uh through high school i guess uh high, high school was interesting i was always a fat kid that got bullied you know i was always just uh the black sheep i didn't i didn't really know where to fit in in fact we only had you know, I only had uh, two two black kids in my uh, my my class, and uh, they were my best friends. And I absolutely like dressed like them and everything else like that. And Hell just yeah. like I had I had no idea what was going on. And like everyone made fun of me all the time for everything. I just I just really was trying to figure it out on my own as a kid. Yeah. For and sure. um, then uh, sixteen came around. I got kicked out of my house. Uh, my dad married someone and uh, wasn't super. I wasn't stoked about it. I was uh, very just upset about the fact that he even married someone just like a kid is, you know, just like, you're not my real mom. You yeah, know? yeah. And stuff Fighting like that, it, of course. And um, I was just very rebellious. I was very angry. I was very, I was, I was an asshole, you know, and my dad was like, dude, you're going to respect my woman or you're going to get the fuck out. I was like, peace. Yeah. <laughs> so um, here I am, 16 on my own, finished school. And then where did you even go? Like, um, I actually went to Missouri. Um, so I had at a 16. Yeah. I had a friend. Sure. Um, I had a friend that was right across the border of Arkansas and it was like 30 minutes to my school. And Damn. so I just drove back and forth all the time. And I had, um, I had a, a full-time job at Perkins. And so I just like, I was working my ass off all night. 
um, going to, uh, going through school all day, working my ass off all night, still making it uh, an hour away some, somehow twice a week to do uh, jujitsu training. So you know, I find that extremely interesting because uh, you know you you had quite the road, uh, yeah. like with your parents and stuff like that. I mean. And I can't relate to it, you yeah. know, and you know, you, you know, my family and stuff, my mm-hmm. family dynamic, and I've been extremely blessed to like, you know, have a very solid family unit, you know, my sister's family, my parents live 15 minutes away. And like, I always try to like make my friends feel like that's their family as well, yeah. you know, and uh, because the older I've gotten, the more I realize like I have a lot of friends that have been through similar situations as you, right. and it breaks my heart really because I can't relate to it. And, um, you know, so it makes me, but it forces me to like really show them appreciation had well, that gratitude you know because it's it is yeah it's crazy you know well, well just to turn the tide of this just to make it a little bit more lighthearted, uh especially just to explain my view for you and the viewers and everything yeah. it's like i absolutely appreciate all this you know looking back i have every single catalyst in my life that's 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 the main concept that i look at is just like was my mom this way? Okay, my mom was doing the best she, she knew how to, you know? And it's just like, so I can't really blame her. Um, do I have a good relationship with her? No. But at the same time, it's just like, I can't, I can't say that I wish anything was different. I wouldn't be who I am. Yeah. I, I couldn't be exactly who I am without all the experience that I had. And I definitely wouldn't have been as tough. I definitely wouldn't have been as, you know, understanding. I, de- I definitely wouldn't have, uh, I probably wouldn't be in the awesome situation that I am now, you know? You, so, And I, I admire that because you get a lot of people that are like, you know what they sit around they're like i wish i would have had this i wish i would have had that i wish my family you know and they're sitting out around making a bunch of wishes that aren't going to happen you know like these wishes you're wishing on bullshit like what's happened has happened Mm -hmm. all you can do is change the trajectory of the future for yourself so stop sitting around like twiddling your thumbs like giving your hopes up for something that's not going to occur exactly make those changes now like you can go into like you know if you do decide to have kids like raising them and like having that family unit like you mm-hmm. want to you know exactly. you can have that influence because you learn from that shit mm-hmm. and I, I admire that man so you just take it in like hey it is what it is mm-hmm. i'm gonna move forward and be the best i can you know so yeah. that's cool exactly so i agree um where were we 16 working 16 working, um going so to perkins yeah so um yeah eight, uh, 18 finally got shipped off actually back up um 16 working 17 years old um I was convinced that my entire life was going to be surrounded around fighting. I was really big into jiu-jitsu. I did jiu-jitsu from about 9 to 18. And um, then I did MMA from about 14 to uh, to 18. And um, 17, I had my first MMA fight. And uh, it was really cool. It was really oh, awesome. Yeah. Um, it was super scary. And I absolutely did not know how I was going to do. I was fighting. I was 17 fighting some 31-year-old. And so, go. yeah, yeah, I guess, <clears throat> yeah, fought a 31 year old a couple months ago, <laughs> but, um, I was up to fighting this massive dude and like, granted he was like, so how big were you? Because you're a massive dude. I was still two thirty. I was still pretty big. Okay. So well, shit, man. Yeah, no, I was, I was big, but we're talking about, we're talking about the mentality, man. We're talking about the no, seven, I get it. I get you know, it. I was, and you know, in fact, my, um, my nickname for the, for the ring was man child because I had a full beard. <laughs> <laughs> still came out to epic music though i didn't come out to like music like everyone else did i came out to uh um i think i showed it well man, it doesn't matter uh it was like all kind of like trumpets and and horns and like orchestra music it was pretty cool and hey, everybody was probably like what does this dude do and i was like hey this is me <laughs> <laughs> hey doing your thing man i appreciate that um, oh yeah 18 um got shipped off the marine corps um uh part I, I also uh, sorry I jump around I can't can't keep a story straight I guess okay, um, lost a hundred hundred pounds for the Marine Corps um, I was about three hundred and twenty five pounds was I it think for the ten- BMI bullshit no I was three hundred twenty five pounds in tenth grade man Oof. and um, I was I, I was extremely obese like as I said I was a fat kid who got Damn. like I need to see a picture of this I need to see yeah a picture yeah, of yeah I got I got some somewhere my dad mostly has them I didn't take any pictures I was so ashamed of myself I just didn't want anything to do but. Close to my school, we had this, uh, we had this like road that was three miles long, exactly three miles long, and it was just straight, and no one was out there, no one could see me. Not, like this is the only thing that like kept me going, and um, so I, I tried a lot of things, but I was like, all right, Marine Corps, I just need to run. That's all I need. Like yeah. that's all I know to do is run, and yeah. so I just tried to run. And I remember the first day, it's just like I literally, I was like, we're gonna do this, and I was like this little fat kid in a hoodie and got like maybe an eighth of the way and then i i remember i was like 
that was like one of the biggest turning points in my life because I do like this significant moment. I do remember looking down this road and I was like, I can't make it, but I can walk. And so I walked and I walked all the way down and I walked all the way back. And then I was like, I started looking at the light posts cause there's light posts all the way down. And I, I don't know how many, but there's tons. And I was like, if I can just make it one more light post every day, one more light post every day. And so it was like, I would, um, I, I would just keep trying and trying and trying and I failed, man. Like some, uh, some days I would be so upset because like I'll be gunning as hard as I could and trying to get to that next light post. And I would just absolutely like puke and die and just like lay down on the ground. I'd be like, nah. I'd get up and like walk and I'd feel so defeated, but I would always walk. I would always finish it with a walk I admire and, that, and fast forward a year later and like I'm running it up and down like three times. There you go. And yeah. And so it was, it was this, this very interesting moment. Sorry to skip that, but 18 finally lost hundred pounds. I went from, well, actually over that, I went from 325 exactly to 208 exactly. Cause that's what I had to weigh in at. at how, long, how long was that time frame? Um, that was about, it was about two years total. Okay. So, so like when I decided like Marine Corps is it for me was also the decision of like, I kind of felt like, well, I'm retarded and I don't think school's going right. So I think that I probably need to go to the military. I feel you there, man. I've told my yeah. story. <laughs> yeah, man. And you know, college was a bust, but that's for another story. Yeah. Um, so, um, went to the military, uh, well, real quick. So, you know, I like what you said about like, you know, first you you got in over your head and then yeah. you saw, you saw a, a light. Yeah. You're like, all right, make it to another light yeah. every day. And I, I like that, man, because a lot of people don't think about that. You know, they're just looking. Yeah. They, uh, you know, for example, I got this client I'm training and, you know, he's, he's in a similar situation and it's just like, I, it's, he expects things to happen like that or like to yeah. try new things. And I'm like, well, we need to perfect this and take steps here before we go to here, man. Yeah. I said, you're looking down the road and all you just see is just this long ass road. Yeah. I said, you know, you, it's like you see a sign. You're like, you, you make marks like that. Like you said, with the light, you make marks and you slowly get there, man, especially yeah. when you're really far behind. And I, you know, I, I can relate to that, man. Um, cause like when I joined the military, I had to do the same thing. I wasn't that heavy, but yeah. you know, I had to pass the BMI test for my height. And I said, I, I had to cut a bunch of weight. So my dad like is a runner's. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And so my dad was a runner, you know, and he, you know, got me like a sweatsuit and took me out of the track in my high school, man, that I went to and, uh, you know, had me running laps, sweat my ass off, trying not to die. But I mean, it was just that progressive, you know, next thing you know, I'm running and going to Pilot Mountain where I lived and uh, running on the mountain and stuff like with ease, you know, I was like, hell yeah, this is badass, but it just takes a lot of time. So yeah, that's cool, man. Just that was your mental. You didn't say screw this. I'm done. <laughs> like there ain't no way I'm getting through this shit. I'm just going to look at it a different way, yeah. change my perspective and just make that progress. Yeah. And that's what people got to, people got to focus on that, man. Yeah, no, I mean, yeah. shoot, man. I had to yeah. get, I was a little, that's while we're here. I was definitely fluffy. You yeah. Know? I definitely, I guess I thought higher myself. I had, I, I guess, <laughs> A lot of charisma, so I was like, you know, I'm still yeah. the shit, you know. But now yeah. I, I look down on myself quite yeah. a bit. For you ever that. wonder what people like look at you like now, and then like how they looked at you then? Once someone once told me I had uh, I had a glow up. Yeah, I didn't even know yeah. what that was. I had to Google it. Yeah, I, I, I got told I got told that by some new generational kids <laughs> one time too in college. <laughs> they were and, like, I, and they were like, yeah, you did, you did a glow up, and I was like, yeah. They were like, that's a hell of a glow up, <laughs> and I was like, what the. F hell did you just call me yeah you know, right like, like, i didn't know i thought they were talking magic i was like what in the world and i google it and i was like oh it's just like i had a big change that's cool yeah <laughs> so that's how i just took it wrong yeah but um anyways okay so you're in the military now yeah cool. so um i had an uncle you know my dad's brother that was um his name's kelvin if he's out there i hope he's listening to this because he, he, he you're one of the biggest influences in my life kelvin, um, shout out to kelvin uh, this guy, this guy was just badass, just green beret. And I just remember, I, I remember being a kid and him coming to visit. I've only seen this man like five times in my life, but like, it, you know, he was just such, such a, such a badass. He was special forces and he was always going everywhere. 27 years in, uh, the army with special forces actually. And, um, his whole damn uniform was so decorated. And like, I just remember that's it. That's a superhero. And I remember just like my whole life I was obsessed with superheroes and everything and that was the main reason I went you know I was like as cliche as it sounds I know it sounds crazy cliche but like I literally went to the Marine Corps because I was like 
uh, this is this is the only way. This is the only way I can be a superhero, you know? And unfortunately for, for me, that's just, that, that was very far from the truth. But um, that was my goal is to go for uh, MARSOC. And so my entire career, that's all I chased really. Yeah. And unfortunately, um, I was a mechanic, I was the LAV mechanic. And unfortunately I just like douched it up in training. And so it's just like, it's, it, it, it's something that really weighed heavy on me for a long time, I think. Yeah. But I, looking, looking back, it was just like I did everything I possibly could have for training. Same, yeah. same, same, same concept with uh, the, the, the light post. I had everyone and their dog absolutely being like, you wouldn't make it, you wouldn't make it, you wouldn't make it. And, of course, I didn't. But at the same time, like, nobody else was out there with, like, a 50-pound pack running around with nobody else, you know, carrying, like, some stick full of sand, acting like it's a rifle, yeah. you know, and just, like, doing, you know, your best to train. Unfortunately, um, the body didn't hold up. I actually got um, really injured on a uh, rappelling accident, and um, my uh, ankle uh, fibula, um, completely got destroyed, had reconstruction on my leg right there. And, uh, my, my back has been the bane of my existence since then. (laughs) Um, I herniated my, uh, this is really where the story starts. This is really where, who I am now, like kind of came to be, I guess. So, um, I herniated my L5, my L4 and my, uh, L3, um, S1 too, like not the actual vertebrae but the discs in between those so three discs um and uh i ripped both my sacroiliac ligaments all that was minor and i had one disc that was okay and then uh fast forward to uh another story i destroyed that disc completely too (laughs) like i I got hit by a car in 2019 there you go but um but anyway yeah right i know dude i yeah, dude, I, I know you feel me. That's that's what's so interesting is our story is so, like, similar, but not at the same time. Yeah, I definitely yeah, didn't yeah. get thrown 90 feet from a motorcycle, you know. <laughs> hey, we just, we got these ups and downs. Couldn't imagine, couldn't yeah. imagine, but, yeah. So this is really emotional for me. Um, you know, um, I, I don't take defeat well, especially major defeat, especially yeah. life-altering defeat. And um, my, you know, especially when everyone's saying you're not going to make it, then you don't. And so for a long time, I sat in that. I sat in this emotion for a good bit of just like, damn, I didn't make it, <laughs> you know. And I didn't know what to do because, like, I was so sure in my head. Like, to, you talk about visualization all the time. Like, this was, like, I was probably sitting in your seat where you are now because you <clears> talk <throat> about visualization all the time. You talk about, like, just seeing it, just being it, just doing it. and believing That it. was me. Yeah. I was 100,000% on board with the belief that I was going to make Marsoc and I was going to be out there raiding and doing shit. And that's all I wanted, man. That's all I wanted in life. That's literally, like, the, the only thing I wanted was to fight. And, um, and then just, you know, life happens. I s- Real quick, I spoke on this last week and is like visualizing these things, yeah. And like because I believe in that, that there's yeah. there's a power in that because you're manifesting that that yeah. mindset. You're like, all right, this is the goal, like, and you just got to put yourself there. Yeah, you know, like this is how it's gonna be. Yeah. But like a lot of times, you know, we do that. Yeah. And then we eliminate the possibilities of failure. Yeah. Which like there's so many fucking options for like crashing and burning. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You don't know what's gonna happen. Like you can have that goal, but. Shit's firing at you yeah. left and right, but we just get so gung ho about yeah. this that that all kind of like we race out our mind. Then when something goes wrong, we're like, "Shit, man! I never even thought about that possibility." Yeah. And it can definitely wreck you. Yeah. So I, t- I spoke on like having visualization and keeping that, yeah. but also telling yourself like, "Hey, shit can pop off," yeah. you know, and being able to bounce back from it. Yeah. But yeah, so yeah, it's man. No, I, I agree, and that's I mean that's that's been. Bouncing back has been one of the hardest things for me in my life. I think um, it, it has absolutely been the biggest challenge because I do feel like I'm a tank, especially when I get going. There's no stopping me. Oh yeah, I feel like I know. I feel. <laughs> <laughs> no, I I I think personally. Um, five minutes. Oh, five minute break or yeah, until we got a break. You're good. Keep, okay, keep rolling with it. <laughs> I, I I think I think. Shit, where was I? <laughs> Shit, I don't know what you're talking about. You were like, you're saying I'm a tank. I'm yeah, like, man. I just, I, you know, bouncing going. back, uh, me, me being a tank, uh, has always been a, a serious forte, but like if, if it, it is like a tank when, when, if it stops, 
holy crap, it sucks to get it back rolling. It takes forever. It takes the ma- most massive amount of motivation, the most massive amount of digging on myself. The like, I remember like, I, so when I went and when I was doing all the training for Mars Talk and stuff, my entire room was covered in superheroes and like inspirational quotes. I literally like got in trouble just because like in Sharpie and all different colors, I wrote all over my bunk and everything else. Like yeah. I, just everywhere I looked subconsciously, I was, in, I didn't know this at the time, but subconsciously I was implementing, you know, you're going to do this. Yeah. And like, it was just such massive belief. And, you know, I did the same thing when I went down because I was for about two years, I was pretty, pretty messed up. And, um, you know, um, I, I, I had massive amounts of anxiety. I had massive amounts of like just turmoil. My relationship, I was married at the time. My relationship was going down, down the hole and it was just, it, it didn't make, nothing nothing made sense so i slowly started doing that and slowly started to surround myself with the same stuff like you can make it you can do it what are you going to do you're going to f- defeat this and one of the biggest key hallmark things for me was the doctors all of them all of them all the ones that i saw was just like dude you're never gonna you're probably never gonna walk right again you're, you're probably always gonna have a limp and i'm like in my head i'm like immediately i'm like why would you say that <laughs> like, why would you do that to yeah, me? yeah but you know at the same time i was like no dude like there's got to be a way there's got to be something out there and that got me really into the study of like medical research and like has anybody else had this happen to me and you know has anybody like cracked their skull open has anybody like you know done done any of this and came back and i tell you what my coach um ben Pikulski at the time um for bodybuilding man he, his podcast saved me because this dude's a yogi and this guy had just the most amazing people pulling on and luckily like you know i did have a little brain damage from my injury but luckily i had uh this this awesome podcast that i heard and it was talking about um nutrition and how this dude was i can't remember their name i wish i could but he he was in the hospital absolutely pretty much brain dead and he could move his pinky that's all he could do he could move his pinky and they had a tube down his throat and um basically they were feeding him like glucose and sucralose and like just basically foods or, or basically um basically sugar is what yeah. they were feeding him and he was basically begging like no and he was like trying to like trying trying to signal you know he was like dude just take me off of this like anything else like just not not this in my body and he knew that and um he started slowly getting getting into like a high fat diet and start fixing his brain and um i guess i guess that high fat diet gives you the ability to um kind of kind of start formulating brain matter or whatever it is um it anyway did the same thing for a very long time i went keto again and it actually blew my mind my brain got a lot better i just started getting way more cognizant and that got me into nutrition that got me into looking into medical research and that got me into um ultimately figuring out the human body because mine was so broken and i was like i gotta figure this out quick break um to talk about our sponsors which is not rain um actually the only sponsor we have is relentless pursuit uh that's my apparel company that's what the podcast is named i didn't want to think of a clever name because it's all relentless pursuit baby and we're sticking with that so definitely check out relentlesspursuitlifestyle.com see what kind of apparel we got live by this message and you know kick some ass be the best version of yourself thank you all right so we're w- welcome back with jesse mace um we're right there where you're talking about you know getting in the military, Mm -hmm. going through your whole, Mm -hmm. you know, messing up your your spine, all that good stuff, Mm -hmm. bad stuff, not good stuff. Mm -hmm. Uh, But being forced to basically fix your mindset and you were talking about diet, I don't know, you go, you go, you you know where to go. (laughs) Well, (laughs) yeah, I kind of, I kind of went off on a tangent anyway. Um, Long story short is that I, I got injured and I could not get any help for the life of me. You know, I had one great physical therapist and unfortunately, I wasn't paying enough attention, and I was kind of brain dead to uh, really pay attention to him. I was just so distraught by my life at that point, and I, you know, uh, marriage was going down the hole, military career was going down the hole, a lot of things were just out, out of the out of the bag. Just sucked. So, um, but one thing that was in my mind was like, I'm not, I, I'm, I'm not going to quit. I'm going to figure it out. And like, I still had in my mind, I was like, somehow I'm going to do this. Somehow I'm going to pull this off. Somehow I'm going to go special forces. Yeah. And it didn't happen. But what did happen was I was able to find a serious passion, which I just started reading anatomy and started getting into it. I was already a personal trainer. I got my 
personal trainer's license at 18 for whatever reason. I thought it was going to give me the master key to fat loss and understanding. And then at like literally, <laughs> it was the biggest joke of all time. Cause even by that time I was like, this didn't teach me anything. I already knew way more than this. And, um, so I just, I, I started getting into medical research real heavy. I started reading as, as, as many documents and as, as much like, medical philosophy, I guess you could say, to understand my condition specifically. So herniations of the back, for sure. I dealt with that for most of my life, you know, um, or, or not most of, my, add, most of my adult life. To add on to that, you were talking about the certifications. Like, you know, a lot of people yeah. think, they think just because they get a certification, they know what they're doing. And like, yeah. people might like get upset about this, but at the end of the day, certifications, honestly, don't really trying to word this correctly. They don't work. They, they don't work. They don't work. I mean, it gives you the opportunity yeah. to like go in a gym and get a job. But at the end of the day, I, everything I've learned, even in schooling, yeah. man, and you know, like everything I've learned uh, as far as the body goes, yeah. goes from like experience and learning from other smart individuals that do like in-depth research. Oh, and, you're about to get me It never connects to the freaking certification I got, like the Nassim book. I, you know, yeah. and not to dumb that down, I think it's a great thing because it does teach you baseline yeah. steps but like if you want to be worth a damn in the training yeah. world or as like a coach or whatever you need to like go much yeah. further so yeah you well this is actually perfect because this is the part of the story where i get fiery and, on, and touching on that uh -oh. that's that's where th this is really what happened and you know i i love your story because it happened for me in a very different way your story of your wreck and you know you see in the fire and mm -hmm. everything I saw it in a different way because as I was doing this research and understanding things and I, you know, I had, I had many coaches and they had already kind of started that fire and I was already upset in the coaching world of like, dude, nobody, no coach takes anything seriously. Like this is just not the standard that I agree with. Yeah. And the doctors did the same thing. It was like, this is not the standard I agree with. You're a doctor. You went to school for eight years and this is what I'm getting out of you. And it was just like, it, it was just, it, it blew my mind. And so you know, personal training service to any, any certification out there, I'm pretty upset with, because the thing is, is that everywhere I've looked and everywhere else I've talked, anyone I've talked to with certifications, it seems like, oh, I've got a certification. What is the certification supposed to do? Cert paper doesn't make you professional. It, it doesn't, but still in our society, they want to force that and they want to push that. So it's, again, the question is, what is the certification supposed to do? It is supposed to certify that you know what you're talking about. So if you're taking a certification and at the end of it, you don't know what you're talking about, I don't care. And, you know, it's just like, that's a, that's a big thing for me is just that, you know, I, I have, um, I have ACE, I have NASM, I have NSCA. I've went through all of them trying to, trying to like, just, Hey, does, does any of these like actually have any value? Now I will say, uh, National Strength and Conditioning Association has immense value. They are yeah. great. And especially if you, uh, do their, uh, uh, NSCS, yeah, NSCS. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, yeah, especially yeah. if you do that, that's amazing. Um, but the, the the whole concept of of the certification world and the you know medical professional, the I got this on paper and this is who I am. Like it really doesn't matter. Uh, no. You're the only thing that actually matters. And I wish there was some way to characterize that. But your character and your passion into what you do yes. and how much you're willing to put effort into knowing your job. Like I try, I try my best to read at least an hour a night on anatomy and it doesn't always happen but i that's that's my goal and sometimes i can get i can actually have two hours uh, nights where i have two hours yeah. i have nights where i have 30 minutes and this is why i'm great at what i do but it's not because of anything that i've done it's no no course of course has added tools to my tool belt but no course has made me what i am today i made me what i am today of course no no i'm, I'm with you 100 percent man I, I love talking about that subject because like i you know Personally, I'm a very shitty tester. Mm -hmm. I suck at taking tests. Mm -hmm. I can like sit there and study something all day and like get it and grasp it, and especially like doing it mm -hmm. as far as action goes and on the OJT, kind of like an on-the-job mm -hmm. training deal. Mm -hmm. But like you put a piece of paper in front of me with bubbles and it's like, all right, you got 200 questions. Yeah. My brain just goes blank. And yeah. you know, this translated to the military. We talked about this. I was in the Air Force and you know, I'll be straight up. Yeah. I hate the testing thing because yeah. a lot of people can test, but their leadership skills lack, yep. you know, their, their, mm. their, their ability to like really work with the other people, inspire them and like run a crew and do their task yeah. is extremely subpar. They shouldn't be at the rank they are, but because they took a test well, yeah. they've got you beat. And I hate it. And I think it's crap because it goes the same back with these certifications and stuff. Like you can't teach people, um, I mean, you can teach people like the personality traits yeah. and the leadership traits and everything, but you teach them a totally different way. But mm -hmm. to me, that shit translate a lot more. You yeah, know, sure. I looked at, 
you know, before the wreck, I was looking at physical therapy. That's the route I wanted to go. I was going to have a hell of a road with school because, like, you know, I had failed college before the military and I'd taken class, a class while I was in. So I was fighting this, like, terrible GPA, but I was driven to do it. But it was like, oh, you got to take all these classes, classes because it's competitive. I'm like, dude, you know, if I could have it my way, which I don't, if I could write the regulations, just throw me in the fire with these other students that are really good at, like, the, the brain stuff. Yeah. And just let them handle people one on one, and let's yeah. see who outperforms who. Mm-hmm. Because I can fully say that I'm I could get with somebody and work with them one on one, and get them to understand and also connect with me. Mm-hmm. And you get someone that's just like just good at taking a test, and they're talking to this person in book words. Mm-hmm. Book words. It's not it's not going to translate. You're using book words. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, it's not going to translate to him as well. I don't know, man. I just think. I think that, yeah, you get what I'm saying. The whole piece of paper bullshit, man, it doesn't, it doesn't make you better. It's the bane of my existence. And, um, you know, it's, uh, you know, I went to college and that was a whole nother fire ring because, oh my God, like not only like, it seems like the perfect storm really, because I was, you know, I was, you know, dating this, this chick that was a, you know, a doctor and she was just like, no, 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 she (laughs) dude, crazy, absolutely crazy. And, um, but she, I remember one day coaching her and, you know, she wanted to learn how to squat. And this is, this is one of the days that like, I have many days that just blow my mind, but like, I just couldn't, couldn't fathom that this would come out of like someone who had been studying medical sciences for years and couldn't come out of their mouth. And I I was training her and I remember I was like, okay, we're going to brace on the squat. So I want you to breathe out. I want you to flex your core and breathe in against it. And she looked at me and she was like, no, that causes a hernia. Oh, and I just like lost my mind. Cause like, it was just a concept. Like I can coach anyone. I can teach you better, but I was like, I shouldn't have to teach you. Like I should not have to teach you this very basic anatomy concept. Like this isn't a mechanical principle. This has nothing to do with like any kind of crazy medical stuff that you've learned. If you haven't mastered this mechanical principle of understanding just the anatomy, just the anatomy. We're not talking about drugs. We're not talking about surgery. We're not talking about, you know, your, you know, you know, any certification that specializes in how to treat a patient. We are just talking about understanding anatomy. Was she connected to bracing with like, was she connected that with bracing or just the fact that squats could cause that? Or, just, or, or just, just the combination not, just, of just bracing, bracing, okay. like actual bracing, like how you're supposed to squat. They teach that. And, you know, and that's one thing that irked me in um, exercise science is like they teach don't brace like literally i've been in classes where they're like no bracing and like a huge thing it's even been a test question and like i had a final research project where i literally went to starting strength the barbell yeah you know what i'm saying very basic stuff um sky uh sent that information to me and i was like i started reading into it and i was like this is how it's done i literally referenced that and i like just explained it all like why yeah. bracing is actually much more important the yeah. chance of you getting a hernia or a bursted brain or some yeah. shit it's very slim as opposed to you call it getting orthopedic issues yeah. from not bracing exactly and it's yeah. just like it's not worth it yeah yeah but, man i you know i wish i knew you then because i could have sent you tons of information and you could have just killed somebody hey, it's cool my professor was just like i yeah. didn't know this thank you very yeah. much so i was like hell well, yeah <laughs> one of the things i go to on bracing like especially because i mean i've had i've had a couple of people argue it that since then but they're not doctors so i'm like here yeah. let me show you you know um chris duffin man he's he's got tons of information on um he, bracing and everything he's probably like the master bracer quote unquote and you know he gets into extreme science this, this is the same dude who has deadlifted over a thousand for three squatted uh i, I believe his he, he did squat a thousand for two maybe but he he squatted 850 for eight cool he's catching so, up to me yeah so or something like that yeah, i can't i can't remember it but anyway he's he's strong and the th- he does bracing seminars. This dude also made Kabuki strength, and he also has uh, I got some of his stuff. Good yeah, stuff, man. Kabuki is amazing. Yeah. Um, shout out to Kabuki. <laughs> um, but yeah, Kabuki is awesome, and uh, he, one of the reasons it's awesome because I, I believe he he was like an engineer for yeah. a long time. If this engineer can go back to the anatomy and kind of understand it, kind of like I do, then this engineer goes, oh, okay, so this fits together like this, this bracing, like gives you, you know, some diaphragmatic pressure, yeah. protects the spine, mm-hmm. protects the organs. It like actually creates a base and it creates less of a weak point. So from point A to point B, you're solid, not, not, not wiggling around in the middle, yes. hoping something doesn't break. So yeah, bracing is important. But Certainly. that, that conversation with her, you know, when she told me that bracing would ca- cause a hernia, I was just like, all right, 
all right, this is this is unbelievable. Oh, okay, we had made that a ten minute conversation. Yeah, right. It's crazy. But yeah, anyways, yeah, go go on with that. So she um, she kind of sparked this this fire, and I this is probably the most uh, what's the word for it? Um, I know, what is it when someone does something? It's it's a simple word. I don't know why I can't can't think of it right now. But someone does petty. This is the most petty thing I've ever done in my life. <laughs> yeah, sometimes you need to. So in my end of college, I'm writing a thesis paper. And so I write, write uh, a thesis paper over medical malpractice. Granted, I pissed the whole world off with this, pissed my professor off, pissed everyone off. I pissed like Good. just about, yeah, exactly. And uh, I had her proofread it. <laughs> and we broke up because of that. It was pretty great. It was pretty awesome because I was over it. I was just like, yeah, you're retarded. So, yeah. you know. <laughs> Sucks to suck. This yeah. is better. This is smarter than yeah. you. So there's Exactly. Um, and she was like, she didn't even really read it. She was like, you just wrote, wrote this because you just wanted to get back at me. I was like, did you read it? <laughs> <laughs> so um anyway i just realized that there's a serious problem in the world and the serious problem is that medical professionals aren't professionals they're not taking it in a serious yeah. manner and i am very fiery when it comes to taking care of people when it comes to people that come to you if it, it, it's the ultimate evil in my eyes if, if someone comes to you and and you know they're asking for help and you're in the position to help you're in the position that you said, oh, hey, I'm going to help society. And then you, you're just a doctor that's going, oh, well, come sit in my waiting room for three hours and then I'll get to you when I can and then I'll see you for 10 minutes. And I'm sorry, I got to go. I'm not really going to listen to you either, but you know, go ahead and feel free to ramble so I can write some scripture on the paper and give it to you and then hopefully it's better than come back yeah. and, and good luck getting an appointment with me in three months because you know, I just, this is how it is. And I'm just like, no, it's not. It's not how it is. And I'm not going to allow that to happen. That's, that's, that's internally my being speaking right there. And for me, I just, I, I, I want to take down the medical community, man. I, I, I want them to see what it is to actually take care of someone. And more importantly, I want to deliver some kind of method somehow, which I want to write this book over medical malpractice, but I also want to, I, I want to create a basis of a self sustaining medical system yeah something to where it is when you're growing up you understand how to take care of yourself you understand anatomy you understand what goes wrong you understand why things go wrong and if if that was implemented in our education system what i'm trying to do is i guess i'm trying to offer a better way because yeah. i you know i thought about it and i've thought about it many times and i've actually had you know some decent amount of people on, on on the health board kind of attack me for it but i i i want to take them down but i think the more educated version of that is I want to give everyone the power to get away from it. If we cut resources off, if we completely take away or, or sweep the legs from the medical community to where no one cares anymore, no one's trying to rely on that. Everyone's like, dude, I can do this on my own. Cool. I'm going to tell you, you got my support 110% yeah. and a lot of people I'm sure, but unfortunately yeah. like you're going to have a battle with that Absolutely. because guess what? That takes money out of their fucking pocket. Yeah. Right. And God forbid you do that. Right. I mean, that's why we still, that's why they still prescribe painkillers, yeah. right? Instead of, exactly. instead of edibles, you know, yeah. which was a great transition for me after yeah. my accident. So, um, yeah, dude, you're going to face a battle with yeah. it, but like, obviously that means you're doing something right, yeah. you know? So exactly. I, I'm exactly. all for that shit. Take them down, yeah. baby. Yeah. I'm with you, bro. Getting some enemies, you know, yeah. you're, you're, you're nothing without your enemies. Exactly. So, exactly. But you know, at, at the same, well, I mean, good luck taking me down because you know how hard it is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you got like, uh, you know, 50 inch wide legs you know like that's your base so yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah um so you know i i opened up this uh you know clinic called the muscle medic mm -hmm. and you know i probably don't do all the uh eh, eh, i don't know if it's you would say fda regulated but I, I don't i definitely don't do all the health board regulated things i definitely don't necessarily fall into my scope of practice all the time but i don't care because like the reality is people need help and me doing as much as I can to help anyone who comes to me, I'm going to do that. If I know how to do it and I know how to do it thoroughly, which I do, you know, it's like, I'm, I'm not going to be like, oh, well, not my scope of practice. Cause the reality is, is that people are asking for help and I know no one else is going to do it. I know no one else is going to be that thorough. No one else is going to go that in depth. No one else is going to explain the things I explain. So I have a lot of fire behind me, man. I have a, I have a lot of, of, of drive to, to help in general. And that's Be what we need, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Because it, it Nobody is, else is doing it. Oh yeah, and it screws people. I mean, and the yeah. health board can sit there and get all 
butthurt about yeah. this and that, but that's just because, and to me, that's the equivalent of like an HOA in a neighborhood, yeah. like just telling you a bunch of shit, but just because they're on a power trip, right? Yeah. I mean, same thing. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, they know you're telling the truth, yeah. and a lot of people don't like to face that, man. Yeah, people don't, people, people do not like their truth, they, you know, and that's actually like why I have this, you know, that's this, this, this thing right here is my Sagittarius arrow, but it's like, yeah. it's, it's the truth will set you free, and that's honestly, Directed at the middle. I'm gonna give you this guy on some astronomy. Not today. Oh yeah. That's like a, yeah. That's a, no, maybe a, no. Maybe another episode down the road. We'll start going to astrological stuff. That's yeah. a. It's quite the road. But, yeah, yeah. I think we talked about it for like yeah. last week, and we talked about it for like. Man, four this hours episode straight. is gonna be weird. So nobody's. Gonna, I, don't, I don't know how anybody's gonna follow this. Yeah, we'll get down there. everywhere. I'm Dude, just there here. Man, same, same. Yeah. But uh, it's okay. It's how all right. Works. So you're trying to tear down the medical field. Yep. That's your approach on everything. Yes. All right. Cool. Yeah. Hell yeah. Um, I mean, honestly, I'm, honestly, that's 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 pretty much the basis of my story, and then we're here. You know, I yeah. just, I, you know, I, I'm probably just as exhausted as you in in most of my days. Yeah. But you know, that's what irks me is that I'm exhausted, not because I'm a workhorse. I'm exhausted because no one else is doing it, yeah. and it's like every time I get down on myself, I I sit there and I hear it in my head, and I'm like, dude, I just want to go home, but. I can't because no one else is going to do it. And I get back up and then I'm like, I'm going to do this. And yeah. that's my answer when everyone's like, why do you work so much? Why are you here so much? I see you at the gym all the time. Cause like I'm at Olympus like all day, every day working on people completely booked out. And everybody's like, why do you do this to yourself? I'm like, cause no one else is doing it. Yeah. There's no a one higher vision is. and purpose. Exactly. Of what they're doing. Yeah. yeah. So, and you're, and you're trying to see that through. Yeah. You know, and I think over time, Personally, I believe that like that'll that'll pay back. People are going to see that, and you're yeah. gonna, you're going to gain attention, and individuals are going to want to like understand the way you do. Yeah, and you never know. You mm-hmm. could have a, a your own spot with mm-hmm. several people doing the same same shit. Like, yeah. you'll have doctors doing drive-bys in their you know their white coats. They'll be pissed off because they're like, oh, no one's coming to me. But at the same time, well, luckily you know, we're underground. So. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. No, but you're you know at the end of the day, you just want to help people, man. Yeah, and I, I love that. You know, you're giving people. And you're providing people the resources to do it on their own. Yeah. And to me, that's huge because like, you know, get people that, oh, I got to go to my, you know, weekly chiropractor visit, or I got to go do this, this, and this. And it's like, man, if you actually understood the pretty simple steps in order to avoid having to constantly do this yeah. and that and like pay out of pocket for it and whatnot, you could be so much better off like financially and your health, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, the human body is fascinating to me when it comes down to it. You know, the it's, it is the greatest healing mechanism on the planet. It already does all the processes that you need. Yeah. You know, I mean, if, if there's something ripped off a bone, yeah, you're probably gonna need surgery. But realistically, in a lot of cases, even a grade two tear of a muscle, you know, it's just, it's, it, it blows my mind how, how well a human body can heal that if the right things are put into play. And most of the time, that is, you know, there's a reason the military actually only, <laughs> you know, only gives you Motrin and, and tells you to change your socks. And it's because inflammation is, the main issue yeah. and overly inflamed uh you know the whole body the overly pissed off nervous systems we're all stressed out we're all maxed out you know all that stuff if you can mitigate inflammation you can mitigate your nervous system and you can calm down you can fix your body yeah. and and you can do it yourself I, you don't even have to come to me but at the same time it's just like it's so simple to me it's such a simple process and all it is is anatomy and biomechanics and physiology yeah and Granted, I understand that like somebody out there is going, well, that's not simple at all, but it's like, but it should be. It's still like you're in this vehicle, you're walking around, moving around in this thing. And so it's a two part system where it's like, I'm upset about the medical community, but I'm upset about people too. But I also understand that the people haven't had the chance to learn on their own because of our education system, our medical system, everything has been kept away from the people. And so if, if everyone took a step back and realized, I don't even know this vehicle I'm driving. Yeah. I don't even know anything about this. Don't you think that's kind of messed up? Don't you think that that's probably not intelligent? No, I'm right there with you. It was just like, it, it you know, goes like the Wim Hof method. Yeah. Like that is a magical method. Magical. Uh, it takes effort and yeah. time, obviously. And it takes, it takes work in order to get it, but like the proof is there. Yeah. That shit is effective. Yeah. And the problem is, is that, yeah, you know, I tell people about it, like, I've never heard that before, you mm-hmm. know? So they don't take it seriously because they've heard it. And I'm yeah. like, well, because people aren't making billions and billions of dollars right. off of it. You have to do it yourself. Mm-hmm. Like people aren't getting rich off of it, mm-hmm. but it is literally your, your mind and your body is so much more capable than you realize. You yeah. don't need medication for everything. You don't need to see a doctor for everything. People have gone thousands and thousands of years without having to go to a doctor or 
fucking run to the pharmacy for everything. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Because they learned probably knew how to do it themselves and we've fallen so far away from that. Yeah. And we've uh, ultimately gone to this dependency mode, mm-hmm. you know? So we just call a number and be like, hey, you know, I'm feeling bad, like I need this or, you know, whatever the case is. Instead of like just really honing in on the practices you're talking about, like learning how to focus in on yourself and mm-hmm. your body and understand simple things yeah. in order to improve your health overall. Yeah. So I think it's great, man. And um, whatever we can all do, you know, to get your message out there and keep yeah. keep pushing that because at the end of the day, man, you're a healer. That's what you do. Yeah. And, and you got a true passion for it. You're willing to take the fire. You're willing to take the heat for it yeah. because you know what's right. Yeah. And at the end of the day, like I, I, tr- I, I believe in that conviction, man. So I respect man, it. At, yeah. At the end of the day, if I get thrown in jail for helping people, I bet you out, brother. <laughs> no, I'm just a bit like that's that's probably where I'd be looking at. Like, where where is the society at? But would gladly do it. Would gladly take the fall. And uh, you know, I think I think uh, I think I'm going down the right road. And I think uh, I'm glad that you're supporting me and you're with me the whole way. Always, brother. You know? Always. Um, so we're, we're reaching the end of this. Yeah. I think we covered some good stuff. Uh, real quick, you know, moving forward, you know, I'm I'm a finish off with something but like what's what's some interest you got going on now like any any pursuits you're tackling you know here in any, the near future besides many. you know the health stuff any too many anything you want to touch on real quick too many i always have a ton man in my head and uh you know it's i go back and forth i'm wishy-washy on everything um you know the the, the most most recent endeavor was um you know uh getting on stage for bodybuilding and i struggle with this so much just because my it, it just it doesn't make any sense i know the politics of it i've been around it for my whole life and so i would love to get on stage but also more importantly than that i just want to look my best and do my best and i think that that's the fir- this is like the first time i've really been like discipline is the most important thing to me in, yeah. in, in in a multifaceted way and also you know i luckily i know so much about the body now that discipline doesn't have to seem so hard yeah. and i can manipulate it on the on the fly but, uh, you know, this is definitely an endeavor. One, one thing that I'm extremely interested in is uh, jiu-jitsu right now. Um, it just seems like it's coming so naturally. It seems like, you know, I haven't done this thing in, like, I don't know how long it's been. Like, ha- haven't really done anything in eight years. Yeah. And, and coming back to it, it was like, damn, I didn't really lose that much. It's cool. It I mean, retains. Until you, like, you, do, you adapt well to jiu-jitsu. Man. Yeah. It's definitely a good sport for you. It's definitely, it just feels natural. It feels yeah. like, it, it, and also, like, what's so cool about it is that, because I know so much about biomechanics now, yeah. it's like, I don't need to know your moves. I just watch you and see how things work and see how things get cranked or how leverages go, and then I'm just like, that works. I know, I can, maybe I can replicate that on a leg, yeah. on the ankle. Maybe I can do that on a wrist. Like, how, how can I... I, like, I, granted, I do know quite a bit already, but I'm constantly like making new moves in my head. I'm like, I bet. Understanding, yeah. Man. Yeah. That's, that's awesome, dude. Well, like, yeah. Attack it full force. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then, um, you know, I want to do this book. I, you know, I want to create our training plan. I have a lot of things I want to do. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, shit, man. I mean, we're similar in that aspect. Yeah. You know, yeah. Like, someone's like, oh, what are you doing, Joe? And I'm like, what am I not doing yeah. or trying to do? Yeah, which direction yeah. am I going today? <laughs> and that's why, you know, I'm thankful for Kate. You know, she's always oh, yeah. just trying to reel me in, like, Joe, like, yeah. you know, don't spread it too high because it's gotten to the point, you know, yeah. I've had to, I've told you this before to where, like, I'm carrying this plate and everything's falling. Yeah. I'm trying to keep, like, everything just from crashing and burning. So you got to kind of take some stuff off. But, uh, yeah. you know, life's short, man. And I think we understand. Oh, yeah. They, we understand how precious it is. Yeah. And, you know, like, and at the end of the day, like it can be much shorter, but we understand that. And I think we just want to tackle it all. So yeah. like we had this passion just to live life to the fullest and tackle every fucking thing in our way. Yeah. So I totally can relate to that. We just yeah. got to like help each other hone in on certain things. Absolutely, yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, because you can't do every single thing. Yeah, I'm just looking, but, I'm definitely looking everywhere. I'm like, but yeah, what's going on? <laughs> but uh, anything else you got for me? If not, I'm going to close out, man. And, and no, man, no, <clears throat> I'm just... I'm the juggernaut here to defeat the medical community, and that's about it. Hell yeah, brother. Well, I am so stoked. Um, <clears throat> I'm very thankful to have had you today, man. Um, like I said, I love you to death. You're one of the best friends possible. I'm very thankful for you and your knowledge. Um, you know, this isn't the last time we're going to have Jesse on here, you know, down the road. I would love to have this guy again and cover some other subjects, you know, see yeah. where he's at with everything. Some you know, we might be 
you know, we might be hitting him up. Uh, he might be in a jail cell, like, because he pissed off too many doctors, and we might be yeah. doing, like, a Zoom call or something mm -hmm. um, as far as this podcast goes. Probably not. Let's hope you don't go to jail. Let's keep you out of there. <laughs> but um, anyways, dude, thank you so much. Yeah, um, man. Anything you want to end on? You want to shoot everybody your social media? Yeah, man. Um, if you want to follow me, the muscle medic, uh, follow, uh, follow it on Instagram, the underscore muscle underscore medic. Um, and uh, basically, I have all my booking information, all, all the information that – of what I do as a practice, how I how I treat people, how I take care of people, it's all there. So if you want to give me a follow, yeah, yeah everybody check them out. Um, and I'm gonna go so ahead and close out. <laughs> everybody go ahead and close out. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and close out everything. Uh, and in order to stay on track with what we got going on here, check out Relentless underscore Pursuit on Instagram. That's gonna be the most up to date um, uh, point of contact. The website is relentlesspursuitlifestyle.com. Uh, this pod, this podcast should be released in the next two or three weeks, and um, we'll, we'll be getting it everywhere. Thank you guys for viewing. On top of that, check out my boy Cinema underscore eighty three. Um, he does. He I couldn't do all this shit without him. I don't even know what the, a lot of these chords even. I don't even know. So he's he's a, an amazing videographer, and um, he he's been my boy and working with me for a long time, putting together some amazing content. And so thankfully, I have him in order to edit all this. And make it happen. What's that? It's underscore cinema. You're good. Don't worry. Und it's wait. underscore cinema eighty three. Underscore cinema eighty three. <laughs> Sorry, I got corrected. Yeah, don't be looking up the other one. It could be some loser. Um, but yeah, so give uh, give my boy Logan a follow, and if if you got any content needs content that needs to be made, uh, it, you know he does it better than anybody I know. So thank you for viewing, and we'll talk to you soon. Hell yeah, that was fun. Man, cameras are weird. <laughs> Especially when you look at them, yeah. Well, that's, that's why I like this. That was really fun.